Hi everyone, Mr. Tegmeyer here, and we're going to talk about moments. A moment as in engineering, not moment as in a point in time. Uh, so we're going to break this up into three parts. The first part that we're going to cover here is just the basics. We're going to talk about some definitions, what is a moment, how do you calculate it, and so on. Part two, we are going to go over some examples. And uh, because it can get kind of confusing if you've not uh, done this before. And then part three, we're going to cover rotational equilibrium. So let's get started. So what is a moment anyway? Well, technically, you can read the definition here. And I'll just go ahead and read it, and then I'll, I'll give it to you in plain English. The moment of a force is a measure of the tendency of the force to rotate the body upon which it acts. So in other words, it's a moment is a force that tends to spin something. So if you think of a wrench or if you think of a teeter-totter, that is a moment. So it acts through a distance. So I have a force, um, and here is a, a wrench as an example. A force that's spinning a wrench. That's what a moment is. So let's talk about uh, some of the terminology. Um, here you see the example of the force on the wrench uh, from the last example. So we have the force, and we also have that force that acts through uh, some sort of distance, and it rotates about uh, a pivot. So distance is D, force is F, uh, but there is the lever arm. One thing that's very, very important uh, about moments is that you see here the distance must be perpendicular to the force that is critical so here you can see the force coming straight down and here's my distance and these have to be orthogonal or perpendicular so to calculate the moment then we just simply take the force times the distance also you might remember from science that it's pretty common to call the moment a torque, which might be a T or the Greek letter tau. They're pretty much interchangeable. So if you hear the word torque or if you hear the word moment, consider them interchangeable. Well, you know that I'm the unit Nazi, so let's talk for a minute about units. Um, here we have a nice little chart that talks about units regardless of uh, what system we're using, whether we're using the metric system, um, here called SI, or if we're using the English system. So for force in the English system, every day we think of pounds. Um, if you're a true engineer or scientist, you use pound force, which is denoted here as LBF. And a common distance is foot. So it's written here as pound force feet. Well, that's pretty hard to say. So if you say foot pound or if you say pound feet, it doesn't really matter. It means the same thing. Um, another very common one is uh, inch pounds. Some people say pound inches. That's fine. I usually say inch pounds. Depending on the magnitude, it might be pound feet. But there's a force. There's a distance. You say both. Uh, let's talk about the metric system, or SI. The unit of force is newtons, and a distance is meter, so we say newton meters. Now, you might say to yourself, self, but Mr. Tegmeyer, isn't that a joule? And yes, it is. But when we talk about moments or we talk about torques, we don't say it that way. We say newton meters to distinguish from uh, a moment from energy or work or something like that. So newton meters, foot pounds. Well, as you can imagine, a force can rotate one way clockwise or it can rotate counterclockwise. We need a way to determine which one is positive. And uh, so when we add moments or when we balance moments, we use an equation, the sum of the moments equals zero because we're talking about um, static equilibrium. So the convention is that a counterclockwise motion is positive. Now, again, it's not really rotating, but if it were to rotate, a counterclockwise motion is positive. 
and clockwise is negative. And one more big topic that you're going to have to know when you go to college. I'm not going to test you a whole lot on it, but you need to know it. Um, and that is the right-hand rule. And we apply the right-hand rule because technically a moment is a vector. So I don't know if you recall from a previous slide, there was a formula that said m equals dxf. And in engineering, if we were to apply a vector, uh, a moment has both a magnitude and direction and d cross f is actually the way to multiply that. So let's take a look at what that looks like. If your thumb is pointing up, it's positive. Down is negative, towards you is positive, and away from you is negative. And if you're saying to yourself, what does that all mean? Let's take a look at some examples. So in this example, let's apply a uh, force to our wrench and let's rotate counterclockwise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my fingers in the direction of the rotation. So in this case, it's counterclockwise and my thumb then is pointing out towards me. That is a positive moment or a positive torque. And if we go the other direction, we'll take our force and rotate it the other way. That is called a, you look at our thumb, it's pointing into the page or into the screen. That is designated a negative moment. And this concludes part one of the moment presentation.